What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video I'm going to be sharing these five pro tips when it comes to working in Revit. I always like to figure out what are the most efficient approaches or the best tools uh, for a quickest possible solution to some of the common Revit problems and in this video I have collected five of those uh, approaches or tips and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you hopefully to save you some time and headaches in the future when it comes to working in Revit. Uh, now before I start with the tutorial I would just like to ask you to check out my website balkanarchitect.com that's going to be the first link just below the video. Uh, there I have some courses I actually have over 95 hours of content both beginner, intermediate, as well as advanced level courses exploring Revit in depth. So if you want to become an expert when it comes to working in Revit, that's the website to check out. Also, I have all of my Revit project files on my Patreon page. That's going to be the second link just below the video. So check it out if you're interested. Also, make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video. It helps me out a lot with the whole YouTube algorithm. And without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in a rabbit and the sample project that I'm using is the one from my architecture design template. It's been made by that template and also a quick course on how I modeled this house is included there as well. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description. Uh, but anyways, let's now uh, cover the first tip a first pro tip and that has to do with navigation in Revit. So when you're working on projects and as you can see here I've got loads of different views open up and here uh, let's say I need so many views I'm, I'm working I'm opening up new views and so on and at some point your task bar here or your kind of view bar that you have with all of the views tabbed up over here is going to get quite uh, crowded and you will not be able to find the views that you need. So uh, you can go ahead and kind of close down all of the views. That's one option. That's a good option. Uh, but something else, if you really quickly need to find an exact view, you have uh, you can search at two different places. So here at the edge of this bar, we have the switch windows. And if you expand that, you can see a little drop down list of all of the views. You can even kind of close them if you want. Perhaps it's a bit quicker than going through all of these. So for example, here, I don't need a kitchen legend or a furniture legend and so on. So you can get rid of these over here. Another way to access uh, the exact view that you're looking for would be to go here to the quick access toolbar. You have the switch windows and there it has this little drop menu. And again, you have uh, basically nine views listed here, but you can open up more views and it's going to give you a little menu where you can kind of scroll down and open up all of the existing views. It's really cool because it shows a little icon, so you can kind of differentiate between 3D views, uh, between schedules, uh, renderings, uh, elevations, uh, this is what ceiling plans, floor plans, and so on. So it's really easy to kind of search for what you're looking for, and then you can just select that and then click OK, and it's just going to navigate to that exact view. So it's a really quick and useful way when it comes to navigation. Another thing that has to do with all of these uh, drop menus and searching for a correct uh, element. So let me switch here to, uh, let's go perhaps to the floor plan here. Uh, let's see, where's the floor plan? Do I have floor plan, regular floor plan? I guess I haven't opened that up, so let's open that up here. And uh, let's say you want to go to this project and you want to just add something, move things around, move this here, move that there. You want to insert some elements, I don't know, a couple of doors here and there and so on. And let's say you make a, a bunch of moves that you kind of, at some point, you dislike and you want to kind of change it. So let's say, let's make a bunch of changes. So I'm just going to delete this, move this here. So as you can see, we've made uh, a lot of changes to this project like this. Okay. And let's say you've made all of those changes and now you decide that, well, you have messed up pretty much and you want to go back to that original uh, place. So you can go back by using the undo like this, but the better option would be to go here and you have a little drop down menu, both for undo and redo. And if you just open that drop down, you can just go back and as you can see, you can just go all the way here so you can 
just go like this and we've gotten to the start actually we've gotten too far so i can just go here to redo and then let's see up to this point there we go so this is just the point where we've moved this arrow so i can just move that back and there we go so it's uh, really easy to kind of go and find all of the kind of previous steps and then you can use that to undo instead of having to click this a bunch of times so i think it's a really good at the time saver and that would be my second tip now let's move over to the third tip and that's going to be the double click function so double click allows you to well double click and as you can see here when i double click on the stairs it goes into edit stair mode so i can change the the width of this stair for example and when i hit finish now the stair is wider uh, so that's for stairs if i select a family for example this bed so if i just hover over it and then double click that family it's going to open up the family editor and now i can make changes to this bed uh, moving forward let's just close out of this and not save the changes here i have a group so this is a group of a table and some chairs and if i just hover over it double click it's going to go into edit group mode and that's going to allow me to change this group and then i can perhaps make a change like that and hit finish and there we go we have edited this table here so uh, all of this uh, was allowed by double clicking now if you double click on a wall as you can see nothing really happens it, it does ask me to attach top base but that's it if i double click on a floor like this it's going to go into added boundary mode so different elements in revit are going to have different effects when they're being double clicked if i double click on this dimension line nothing happens so how do we control this how do we set this up and that's what this tip is all about so if you go here to the file menu open that up and go into options uh, here under uh, user interface uh, we should have let's see uh, we should have the option here we go double click options and if i just go here into customize as you can see here i can customize uh, here it says the the family so double clicking goes to edit family uh, and you can open that menu up so it can do nothing it can edit type or it can just do nothing edit family or edit type for sketched elements it can go into edit sketch so that's something like a roof or a floor uh, you can go into edit type or do nothing for uh, inside views and schedules on sheets so if you place some views on sheets if you double click on that view it's going to activate that view but also it can do nothing and so on here for example for groups again we can do nothing edit type edit element same thing goes for the stairs do nothing or edit element so you can customize that here if you want some people like to customize for example the family to do nothing because they kind of find it annoying to double click on the family and then it opens up you can do it by accident i personally don't have any issues with that so i tend not to change that uh, but again uh, if this is something that you might benefit from customizing that's a, a pro tip for you let us now move forward and let's say you want to have a flat roof so i'm just going to go here to architecture to roofs and then let's place it let's just place it on level one for simplicity sake and i'm just going to move over here go with a simple rectangle and i'm just going to uncheck defines slope so i'm just going to place a simple rectangle like that and there we go we have a roof now for this roof usually flat roofs aren't simply flat uh, so what i'm going to do is add a little bit of slope by using the modify sub elements i'm just going to place a point here in the middle then go to modify sub elements select that point and bring it down let's see okay let's click here minus 20, 15 centimeters or something like that there we go so now everything is kind of pointing towards the inside of this flat roof now this can look quite ugly especially when you have these hidden line views where everything is kind of accentuated by using these uh, black lines and i don't like the fact that this looks just like that i don't like that little x 
that goes across our roof. So you can actually get rid of this simply by going into the visibility graphics overrides, going into edit, and then going here into model categories, scrolling down and finding floors, or sorry, roofs. Let's see where are the roofs. Here we go. Expanding that menu, and here we have the inner edges. And if you just uncheck that and hit apply, there we go. As you can see, those edges are gone. Uh, you can still see the slope by this hatch, which is kind of nice. I, I like that. But we don't have those ugly uh, black lines kind of accentuating or placing an X in the middle of this flat roof. So I really like that effect. And uh, I think it does make your models quite more elegant for visualization purposes. And then, of course, for documentation, you can kind of reverse that and include this as well. Uh, but of course, if you go back into level one, it's still going to show those lines. So this is only kind of a view specific change or alteration. And finally, for the fifth tip, uh, let me sh just show you something. I'm going to go here to the project browser and search for elevations. And let's just open up the south elevation. So here you can see that our uh, levels or yeah, our, our levels are basically showing uh, or they're encompassing with these lines, the entire building. But let's say you have something a bit different. So for example, if I move this stair all the way out here, it's not going to be covered by these lines. So now in some cases, you might want to have that. And it's annoying to have to kind of do that manually. So what Revit does, it allows you to select the line and then you right click on the level line and you have maximize 3D extents. So it's basically going to go all the way to that element. Same thing goes with this one. You select it, right click, maximize, and there we go. So it's a really cool way to kind of cover the entire project in these level lines. I think it's it makes everything a, a little bit easier and it does save you a bit of time. So that's just another tip that I wanted to share with you. Okay, so that's pretty much it uh, when it comes to these uh, Revit Pro tips. Uh, tell me, have you known about any of these? Uh, have you learned something that you find useful and that you want to include in your day-to-day -day work? Please tell me in the comment section below. Also, make sure to like and share this video and make sure to subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials, for so make sure not to miss that. And also, if you're interested in any of my courses, project files, or templates, links are all in the description. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this quick little tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.